Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we have to determine whether this infinite sum converges or diverges. So first, uh, this cosine of n pi, we need to figure out what that is. So recall that on the unit circle, every point can be thought of as an ordered pair where the x-coordinate is cosine of theta and the y-coordinate is sine of theta. This point here is 1 comma 0. This point here is 0 comma 1. This point here is negative 1, 0. And this point here is 0, negative 1. Right, and the, angle is the angles here are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. And then likewise over here it's 2 pi. So we need to figure out what cosine of n pi is. So let's go through it carefully. So when n is equal to 0, that's where we're starting our sum we have that the cosine of 0. Well, cosine of 0 is equal to 1, right? It's the x-coordinate at the angle 0. When n is equal to 1, we get cosine, well, we get 1 pi, so we just get pi. In this case, we get uh, negative 1, right? Because here, the x-coordinate is negative 1. When n is equal to 2, we get cosine of 2 pi. Well, 2 pi puts us back here, so it looks like we get 1. When n is 3, we get cosine of 3 pi. Well, 3 pi means we go around one time, and then we go around half a time, right? So we end up here again. This is, this is 3 pi. So this is going to be negative 1. So it looks like when n is even, we have 1. And when n is odd, we have negative 1. So it's pretty reasonable to suggest that the cosine of n pi is equal to negative 1 to the nth power. Because whenever n is even, this is going to be an even number, n. And so negative 1 to an even power is always equal to 1. Whereas negative 1 to an odd power is equal to negative 1. So this will work. So we can rewrite our infinite sum as the sum from 0 to infinity of cosine of m pi, sorry, negative 1 to the n, that was the whole point, uh, over m plus 1. Okay, so this is an alternating series. So when you're, whenever you're using the alternating series test, what you do is you take a sub n and you set it equal to the non-alternating part. So here that would be 1 over m plus 1. If that's not clear, you can think of it like this. This is the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over m plus 1 times negative 1 to the n. So your a sub n is, is this piece. And there's two conditions that have to be shown, or at least stated. The first condition is that the limit, as n goes to infinity, of 1 over m plus 1, in this case a sub n, is equal to 0. And that's clear because as n gets very, very big, this fraction gets really, 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 really small. The second condition is that your sequence is non-increasing. Well, certainly 1 over m plus 1 gets closer and closer to 0, and it's monotonic. So it's certainly getting smaller. It's non-increasing. So both of these conditions are satisfied, and so therefore the series converges by the alternating series test. Some people like to uh, show that this is non-increasing. If you wanted to show that this is not increasing, what you could do is you could think of the sequence as a function of x. And then what you could do is you could take the derivative. So to differentiate this, you would bring the bottom upstairs. And then you would take the derivative using the chain rule and the power rule. So you would put the negative 1 in the front. So you would get negative x plus 1. Then you subtract 1, so you get negative 2 times the derivative of the inside, so 1. So the derivative here with respect to x would be negative 1 over x plus 1 squared. And you see this is less than 0, right? So this function f of x is decreasing. Okay, That would mean that your sequence, a sub n, is also decreasing. And so the second condition in the alternating series test is satisfied. That's just how, you, if you had to actually show 
uh, it was not increasing or decreasing. By the way, what's the difference? Not increasing allows for equality, whereas decreasing uh, means it's strictly getting smaller. There's no equality allowed. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, thank you for watching.